Many of you probably already know that user-defined fields exist, um, but it may be one of those things where, you know, if you want a user-defined field, you're going to a technical user or you're getting a uh, project line, you know, one of the consultants here to do it for you. So today is a little bit of a deeper primer on uh, really the basics of what a UDF is, where you can place it, um, what some of the options are, uh, around the UDF. So, you know, where can a UDF go? Uh, what are my options around the UDF? And uh, where else can I use the UDF? So I'm going to show you in the system where, you know, where they kind of appear and where can I learn more about, uh, you know, user-defined fields. So today is really meant as a primer, but uh, we'll show you where you can, you can go through some uh, video demonstrations and some PowerPoint presentations on, you know, kind of learning more mastery of user-defined fields. We're going to limit our discussion today to user-defined fields. Um, some of you may know that there are other user-defined things in SAP Business One, like user-defined tables um, uh, or user-defined objects. And if you'd like to know more about those things, please feel free to complete the survey at the end of the webinar and, and uh, we'll cover it in a, in a future webinar. Okay, so the first question would be, where do UDFs go? Um, so we're, we are going to answer the question, what data objects in SAP Business One do UDFs apply to? I'm going to take a peek at that. Um, sort of the broad strokes, you know, any master data that you have. So by master data, we mean the item master record or the business partner master record. Um, we can put a, a UDF on. And there are other uh, forms of master data as well. Um, marketing documents. And what do we mean by marketing documents? Well, we mean all of those transactional documents like AR documents and AP documents. So um, on the AR side, you know, sales quotation, sales order, delivery, invoice, credit memo, et cetera. And then on the AP side, kind of the mirroring documents like purchase quote, purchase order, goods receipt. When we add UDFs to the marketing documents, they actually are made available in all of those marketing documents. And then you can choose which of those documents that they are displayed on. So um, uh, the, good, the good part is, yeah, uh, and this is through design, um, when we add a UDF to a marketing document, we're actually making it possible or we're, we're only adding it once for all marketing documents but then we can define which documents we want to display it on so you, it's not that because you're just doing it once for all it has to be on all of them you can choose you know and then what are some of the other data objects that we can place a udf on the other thing that we'd like to draw out through demonstration is where can i place a udf so we're going to take the example of if we're placing a udf sort of on the main body of a document. And this will make sense once we get into the example, but we're gonna use the example of, um, let's say there were, uh, was a recycling fee that applied to some of our item master records. You know, and some of our items uh, were uh, things where we had to uh, collect a recycling deposit and others are, are, are not. Um, we're, I'm gonna show you how to add that UDF and um, you know what it means to kind of be attached to the main body of a of an object, but we can also place UDFs on the rows, the transaction rows of marketing documents. Um, so this really you know covers off anything that you need to be more specific. Like let's say on an AR invoice, um, if your UDF really applies to each line of the document, yes, no, yes, no. You know we can add those UDFs to the transaction rows, and we'll show you how to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and we're going to proceed with the demo. And after I'm done the demo, then I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna check that question screen just to make sure uh, that we don't have anything or that uh, questions are good. So please feel free to ask as many as you like. Okay, so the first, uh, the first concept that we had is you know, where can we place UDFs, like what documents? So here we've got SAP Business One in front of us. Might look a little different. Um, I'm working in the Fiore cockpit of SAP Business One for HANA. Um, so it's, it's a little bit different than the classic design and there's maybe some things that uh, you haven't seen before. Um, but we will be kind of doing some subsequent sessions on HANA throughout the year. 
Now I'm going to go to the tools menu uh, and open it up. And if I move my cursor down to customization tools, it's second from the bottom, you're going to see a few options for customization tools. And some of the options are grayed out because we're not uh, in the spot that we need to be. But the option we want is we want user defined fields management. So we're going to open that up. And what that does is it opens up a list of data objects that we can add a user defined field to. So you can see that there are a number of things. You know, like I mentioned, master data and marketing documents are probably the most common. But then we have things like uh, production documents, accounting documents, budget, sales opportunities, service calls, uh, etc. So for instance, if we needed to add a UDF to the bill of material, um, this is where we would do it. If we needed to add a UDF to the production order, here's where we would do it. Um, likewise, if we need to add a UDF to master data, and these are the various forms of master data, and item master data is right here, items, here's where we would add our, our UDF. Okay, so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to go too terribly far, but if I drill down into the items, we can actually see the gray lines here are the UDFs that already exist. And I'd mentioned that our example is going to be this electronic recycling deposit. So I'm going to hold on to that. We're going to drill into that in a moment. Okay. But if you open up this field in SAP Business One, uh, assuming that you have access to this area, and this is the kind of area that probably only your power users have access to, um, this is what you're going to see. So customization tool user defined fields management, pop it open, take a look and see the various spots that you can add uh, master data. Again, if you wanna play around with this function, the best scenario to play around with it is to actually have your SAP Business One company backed up to a test environment. And then you can, you can play with these to your heart's content. You shouldn't be screwing anything up in your production system. So that, that's always a best practice and we would encourage you know, the use of a test environment and as much discovery as, uh, as possible. So first we're gonna take a look at a UDF that's placed on the item master. And I was sort of referring to that as it's a UDF that applies to the main body. So I'm just gonna go to the first record. We've got our, our trusty OEC computer demo database here and we've got a, an office printer. And over to the uh, right hand side, Here's where the UDF pane is. So if you know you have UDFs on a form and you can't see this right pane, then go to the view menu and notice how user defined fields has been selected. If I shut that off, it's gonna disappear. And sometimes that's the case. So if you opened the item master record and you knew full well that there were UDFs on that, you wanna go to view and show user defined fields and boom, there it is. All right. So there's our UDF that we've added, electronic recycling deposit. And, and I'm sure that a lot of people in today's demo uh, know about UDFs and are probably using them. And I've got a couple options. Um, you know, uh, either de recycling deposit applies to this item or doesn't apply, you know, uh, and it can be anything. You can see we've got another UDF called roller size. You know, I was using this in the demo to a manufacturer that makes conveyor belt rollers and, and that's a piece of data that they want to track. Okay, so that's, um, that's how you get a UDF there uh, in the body. Well, the second example was adding a UDF to the transaction row. And again, I'm gonna show you how this is done. So wait for it, but we're gonna go into an AR sales quotation. And I'm just gonna go to my last one here. Okay, so I've got an AR sales quotation to somebody. I got my trusty printer on there. And if I go over to the side here, you see there's a UDF here for loyalty points eligibility. So in my company, uh, when we sell to customers, some items, most of them, like let's say 95% of the items I sell to my customers are eligible for a loyalty points program. But there's a few things that are not loyalty points eligible, like let's say services rendered or um, you know these types of things. So I've added a UDF to the form that defaults to yes, but as I'm creating a quotation or an invoice, I could say, no, nope, this isn't actually a line where loyalty points apply. It could be that that UDF drives further functionality, which is you know, a good topic for another day's webinar. But you can see I was able to put this UDF in the sales quotation.
All right, so at this point, let's review. So we've seen what objects we can apply UDFs to, and we've also seen kind of two different main types of UDFs, one that's sort of applied to the main body of an object and one that's applied to a transaction row. I'm just gonna quickly switch over and see if we have any questions. Doesn't look like we have any so far, so that's good. Uh, well, could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. Feel free to speak up. <laughs> so let's proceed. So, so now uh, we want to answer the question, what are some of my options around adding that UDF? So we're going to see things like, you know, there's, uh, uh, you can add UDFs of a certain uh, type. And obviously you're going to give the UDF a name and a long description. But then uh, there's this concept of the type of UDF. Like is it an alpha, uh, alpha, alpha numeric field or strictly a numeric field or is it in date time format and that kind of thing. You know, the second concept is that of data validation. So what we mean by this is um, are there constraints on the data that you're putting in that field or is there a predefined list of values uh, that you can put in? So recall from our example uh, that we just saw, and we'll see it again right away, um, with the loyalty points program, there were actually two valid answers. Either it's yes, eligible, or no, not eligible. And it's not a free form text field. Um, in the case of the item master, you saw the, either the recycling fee was yes, it applies, or no, it doesn't apply. The UDF uh, before that, the roller size, that was just a free form text field. And we're gonna see that right away. Is there a default value? And this default value will typically apply um, if you know to whatever data validation, so a list of possible data, and we'll see this in a second. And is that field mandatory? So you know, if I'm adding a new item master, is it mandatory that I enter a roller size or a response to what's in the field? Okay. So we're gonna switch back to our demo system. Okay, so let's see it in action. Let's drill down into the UDF we added for the recycling. And I'm just gonna hit edit. And we're gonna see, and because I've already added it, there's certain things that I can't change. So I can't change its title once we've added it. I can't change its type and its structure but I can go in and I can edit certain things. I could edit its long description. I can edit its character length and I can edit the uh, predefined values. And you can see that I've, the, I've set the default value for the field as yes. So that means if I open up an item master, that field will default to yes, recycling fees apply, and then I have to click it to no. And I've made the field mandatory, which is a little bit of a moot point if you have a default value for a field, um, but it's sort of, a double check in this case. All right, so let's let's just back out and I'm gonna click on the master row here, the items row, and then that makes available the add function here. And I'm gonna click on add, and now you can see that I'm able to edit these things. So this is, say in the case, if I was adding a completely new field, I'd give it a title, I'd give it a description, and then here are the various types. So alphanumeric, numeric, date, time, units in total, general. All right, what's its structure? Is it an address? Is it a telephone number, text, or regular? And more often than not, it's regular, um, but there may be cases where these other ones apply. And then is there uh, other uh, data validation? And these other two, linked to entities and advanced, these are likely things that, that would be good a good topic for future webinars. One of the ones you see most commonly used is this valid values. And here's where we can kind of define uh, a table of valid values. So this could be something as simple as a yes or a no, but it could be even more complex. Like let's say we had um, some sort of rating system uh, for an item, like, uh, or, uh, um, you know, sort of like how a hotel is rated, say for instance, you know, one star through five star, you know, and those are the valid values for the um, field. You know, sometimes people use it for things like, you know, assign a percentage uh, uh, indicator or that kind of thing. Valid value, mandatory field. Okay, so those are the options around UDF. And I'm just gonna quickly show you where we added that UDF on the marketing document. So I expanded the marketing documents if I wanted to add it to the main body, I would add it here under the title, 
but because I wanted on the transaction rows, I added it here. And we can see we've got the loyalty points eligibility field. That's its setup. It's got two valid values. There's a default value. I didn't make it mandatory, but it defaults to yes. Um, so there you go. Okay. So to review, those are the options, uh, the basic options uh, around uh, UDFs. And I'm just going to switch very quickly and see if we have any questions. So far, so good. Now I can, can't hear you. Okay, good. Okay, so where else are UDFs useful? Um, this discussion is really about Besides putting the actual UDF on the item master record or the marketing document, what have you, where else am I able to leverage these things? So there's a few areas that we wanted to make you aware of. Um, when you have a UDF on that item master like we did, I'm going to show you how you can move that UDF around by using the UDI, UI edit mode for the item master record. So we're going to see that in a second. We can actually move that UDF to where we want to on the item master. It doesn't just have to be over on the right hand side. The second thing that I think is important for us to see really quickly is in that marketing document, in that sales quotation, I want to move that loyalty point UDF from the last column in that document to the first column in that document. We're going to see, we're going to see that. Lastly, UDFs are available in custom queries. And we're just going to see a very quick example of um, where they are and how you can leverage them. Okay, so switching again. So first things first, we're gonna go back to our item master record. And here we have our item master record and I'm gonna to go to the tools menu. And if you recall, I think we may have done this in a webinar not too long ago. I'm gonna select edit form UI. So this is the mode where I can kind of um, hide certain data fields, move things around on the form, so on and so forth. If I click on this UDF and hold my button down and then drag it over to the main form, boom, just like that. These, some of these basic U user interface edits were things that we'd previously used, we used Boim or Core Suite to do, but now is core functionality in SAP Business One. Um, by no means does the core functionality in Business One uh, do the same amount of stuff as, say, a Boeum B1 usability package, but the really basic stuff, like redesigning the way the form looks and taking UDFs and dragging them over here, is totally doable. It's very easy. Just as easy as that. So if we save that, then those fields are now over there. And if we want to revert back, if we just right-click on the field and we hit Restore Default, it just puts it back where it was. You can see it hide disable is also a possibility. So we'll just put it back there. Okay, so those UDFs are available there and we can use them anywhere we want on the form. Our second example where, let's just get back to our sales quotation. So we can see that the loyalty points eligibility UDF is on the sales quotation. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to our form settings and I'm going to open the form settings and we're going to go here. And this is something that you may all be familiar with. Of course, there's a number of fields that are available as columns in this marketing document, but I only have a select view uh, showing. And I'm going to scroll to the bottom of this because that's typically where you find your UDFs that you just added. They're right at the bottom. And instead of being at the bottom, I'm going to click and hold over the uh, loyalty points eligibility field and I'm going to drag it up and I'm actually going to drop it over that header there that says column. Um, I can move it up in the list, but if I drag it over the header and drop it, it's actually going to move it to the top of the list. So in this case, I'm finding it more useful. So if I click OK, it's going to make that change. and I'm going to maximize my sales quotation. See, I get a little bit of a redraw issue happening here. So I'm just going to, just going to refresh. There we go. A little bit of a redraw. <laughs> okay, so we may have stumbled upon something that I'll let the uh, the tech department know about. But um, 
you can see that that loyalty points eligibility field is now at the front and you know we can use it there because we find it more useful of course what i just showed you uh can govern the order of of what's on your form um, um like non-udf fields but so that's how we would use the udf uh, there and we can move it around okay last thing we want to use our recycling fee udf in a query so i'm going to go to tools i'm going to go to um all right i'm going to go to tools i'm going to go to query and i'm going to go to query generator and i just remember off the top of my head the table name for item master probably the only one I do remember. I'm gonna enter it and hit tab. And when I do that in the query generator, of course I get a list of all of the fields that are in the OITM table. Again, I'm gonna to scroll to the very bottom and boom, there are those two UDFs on the item master that we added and we can use them in our query. So we're gonna, we're gonna select that roller size, um, so on and so forth. And if we, run the query, of course it's a bit of a nonsense query, but you get the idea. Those UDFs are completely usable in queries. Uh, you can filter on them, you can sort by them, group by them. In the words of somebody wiser than me, it's just totally fantastic, so. Okay. All right, so to review, um, those user-defined fields that we add to the system, we can put them wherever we want on the object as long as that object has the UI edit mode applied to it. And there is a limited number of, of objects in the system. Uh, SAP sort of been adding this UI edit mode slowly but surely. Um, um, there's a lot of, of, of forms that are, are part of it um, and probably more to come. Then of course, um, within a marketing document, if we've got a UDF on the row, we use form settings to kind of put it where we want, like, and then it can show up in queries. So again, just gonna shift and see, I think we're, we're still okay for questions. Okay, so lastly, so now that we have all of this wonderful knowledge, um, I wanna go and try it in my system, um, but then Rob, I don't have you, you know, right sitting beside me the whole time. How can I do this and, and um, uh, kind of work through some of the problems on my own? Um, our recommendation would be go to the SAP Business One Academy. Um, when you go to the Academy, there are some major uh, sections like accounting, logistics. There's actually one section called implementation and support. So they kind of stash it away in the consultants toolkit. And it's a section called customization tools. So if I click on that, I'm just going to launch the website. We'll just take a look and see where that is. So if, if there are people in attendance in this webinar today that have never been on the SAP Business One Academy, highly recommend it. So I just included the link there uh, directly to the customization tools section. And you can see that these are some of the customization tools. So it covers tutorials on queries and then on user defined fields and, uh, and tables, user defined values, alerts, lots of good stuff. Lots of good stuff. So if you if you haven't ever checked it out, and within this section we've got recorded presentations. Um, the PDFs are typically a PDF of a slideshow, um, and then we'll often have uh, you know one or two or in this case three kind of work through demo examples. So really good content uh, if you're looking to um, you know if you're looking to do this on your on your own. Okay. So at that point, I think what we'll do is we'll open the floor up to questions and I'll do my best, I'll do my best to, um, I think I can get rid of the uh, previous questions here, clean it up. Uh, can... All right, we got one from Linda. When would you choose alphanumeric versus numeric? That's a good question, uh, Linda, and um, uh, Peter might have a, uh, Peter Katidis, who's on the call uh, today, might have a, a theory about that. I, I would typically choose a numeric if I wanted to make sure I'm constraining that field to numbers only. Um, uh, and we'll see what, 
if Peter's still listening in, we'll see if he if he has another theory. Usually, it's stuff like um, um, you know, if it's a if it's um, uh, you know a PO number or whatnot, or maybe that's not the best example because PO numbers can include numbers and letters. But if it's a a truly um, uh, if it's a field that you want to base a mathematical calculation on, it should only have numbers, not letters, in the field. So that's oftentimes when you want to constrain it to just numeric. Um, but if I get a better answer from Peter, yeah, okay, Peter's saying you are correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so that's, so I hope that answered your question all right. I just didn't catch it. Is there any, any other questions about uh, what we've just seen? If there aren't any questions uh, immediately, at the end of this uh, webinar, I believe there is a survey that launches. Um, and I encourage you to fill out the survey and answer any subsequent questions. Basically, what we do with those questions is if you have one um, and you're, you're uh, one of the Eastern Canadian customers, uh, Jerwin will, will get back to you. And if you're in the West, I'll typically respond to you and, uh, you know, make sure that you get the answer that uh, uh, you need. The survey is also um, an opportunity for for you to give feedback on what you'd like to see in future webinar sessions. So, um, you know, naturally out of this particular session, I think that, that we could talk about, uh, um, you know, we could certainly talk about user-defined values or formatted searches. Uh, in a future webinar. So if, if those are things that, that do interest you, please do speak up and we will we will write that uh, webinar because it, it certainly benefits uh, everybody uh, um, if we if we deliver these webinars and, and uh, they're always available in the archive for um, for everybody in your organization or throughout the customer base. Okay, I don't see any other questions uh, uh, at this point. So at this point, I'll, I'll thank everybody for attending today's webinar. I hope that you found it useful. Please feel free to ask any follow-up questions that you'd like in the survey, and and don't be shy about uh, don't be shy about submitting webinar ideas.